Hello, welcome to History Quest, where we take fascinating journeys into the past. Today we'll be exploring the radioactive boy Scout. In 1987, 10-year-old Michigan boy David Hahn was given a book that literally rocked his world. The Golden Book of Chemistry Experiments it set him on a path to devouring his father's university-level chemistry textbooks within two years. Five years on, the teenager was building a small nuclear reactor in his stepmother's potting shed, resulting in the shutdown of his entire community of about 40,000 people in Commerce, Michigan, and the nickname the Radioactive Boy Scout. From an early age, the seemingly gifted and definitely passionate Han tested the limits of home experimentation. The Boy Scout was the first member of his troop to even consider, let alone achieve, the Atomic Energy Merit Badge. Hahn's first laboratory started in his childhood bedroom and progressed to his father's basement. He conducted one experiment after another, which grew increasingly complex and dangerous. His concerned parents started to worry, with his stepmother doing regular sweeps of his room to seek and dispose of hazardous materials. One experiment had a shocking outcome. Hahn had been striking red phosphorus with a screwdriver, unaware that it would explode. The blast shook the house, and Hahn's parents found him lying on the floor, semi-conscious. They rushed him to the hospital, where he had his eyes washed out, and the boy had to consult an eye specialist regularly for months afterwards to have fragments of the plastic phosphorus container extracted from his eyes. Hahn saw the Boy Scouts as an opportunity for trialling chemistry experiments. At one scout camp, he produced magnesium strips for making fireworks, which his fellow scouts accidentally ignited, blasting a hole in their tent. On another trip, he was expelled from the camp for pocketing smoke detectors from which to salvage parts for his experiments. Despite, or perhaps because of the disastrous accident, Hahn moved his laboratory outside occupying his stepmother's potting shed. Hahn had decided to construct a homemade nuclear reactor, for which he needed to collect the requisite nuclear materials. The supremely resourceful boy scoured antique and thrift stores for old clocks, from which he garnered radium from a kind of glow-in-the-dark paint that had been used on clock faces until the 1960s. He then collected thorium-232 from gas lanterns, concentrating and purifying it by using lithium taken from smoke detectors batteries. Hahn was even able to purchase uranium ore directly from a supplier. Nearing completion of his own Brito nuclear reactor, Hahn enclosed the reactor substances inside aluminium foil using gaffer tape. However, his concoction became so radioactive that he could measure its radioactivity five houses away from his home. One summer, fearing a toxic accident, he began the process of dismantling the breeder reactor, but his suspicious activities were noticed by local police. Hahn was honest in warning the officers searching his car that he had radioactive material in his toolbox, and soon police had notified local authorities of the danger. State radiological scientists detected around 1,000 times the level of normal background radiation in the potting shed and swiftly alerted the EPA, who conducted a clean-up costing about $120,000. The radioactive materials were removed and the potting shed dismantled and its pieces sealed in 39 plastic drums, which were transported to a nuclear waste compound in the Great Salt Lake Desert for secure disposal. Hahn was to remark years later that it seemed an overreaction when men in moon suits arrived to dismantle his shed and the whole neighbourhood was forced to evacuate. During the operation, neighbours reported seeing an eerie glow emanating from the potting shed at night. From his childhood obsession with the irradiated Spider-Man through to adulthood, David Hahn was single-mindedly passionate about nuclear science. In high school, he masqueraded as a college professor to obtain broken smoke detectors for extracting lithium from their batteries for his nuclear experiments, as well as to seek information from the Nuclear Regulatory Commission to help build his reactor. 
In 2007, he was arrested for pilfering smoke detectors from his apartment building. Because of his previous history, a bomb squad was sent to check his apartment for radioactive hazards. Despite a clean bill, he was still charged with larceny and spent six months in the psychiatric unit of Maycomb County Jail. After the radiation incident, Han joined the Navy and almost lived his dream, working on the USS Enterprise, an aircraft carrier powered by nuclear reactors. However, after serving only four years, he experienced his first schizophrenic episode and was diagnosed with paranoid schizophrenia and bipolar disorder. He started taking medication, but was honorably discharged. Han still yearned to become a nuclear scientist. At age 37, he told a journalist from the Daily Mail that his goal was to create a light bulb that would shine for a hundred years, and that he was in regular communication with several nuclear scientists and engineers. Sadly, Han passed away at just 39 years old of alcohol poisoning. He was discovered in a Walmart bathroom on September 26, 2016, with a blood alcohol reading of 0.404. Prior to his passing, he had attended regular checkups at his local Veterans Administration Hospital, where doctors had found no medical issues related to radiation exposure. His passion for chemistry was fondly remembered by his physics teacher, Ken Gerardini, who said his dream in life was to collect a sample of every element on the periodic table. I don't know about you, but my dream at that age was to buy a car. Thanks for watching History Quest. If you enjoyed this video, why not hit the like button and subscribe? Until next time, bye.